Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. I can see the numbers still going up, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening for this How To Academy event. Uh, we are joined by best-selling author Julia Cameron and founder of Yoga With Adrian, Adrian Mishler. Hailed by the New York Times as the queen of change, Julia Cameron is credited with starting a movement in 1992 that has brought creativity into the mainstream conversation. She is the best-selling author of over 40 books, a poet, filmmaker, songwriter, and playwright. Her internationally best-selling guide to unleashing your creative potential, The Artist's Way, has launched hundreds of novels, plays, films, and even businesses. Adrienne is an international yoga teacher, actress, writer, and entrepreneur. She hosts the YouTube channel, Yoga with Adrienne, an online community of over 10.5 million subscribers, which was recognized by Google as the most searched workout of 2015. She is also the co-founder of Find What Feels Good. Tonight, Adrian and Julia come together to explore creative recovery and personal transformation. There will be time for your questions at the end, so please feel free to write them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. This event also has Zoom's automated closed captioning so if you'd like subtitles, you can turn those on on your screen as well. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome Julia Cameron and Adrian Mishler. Yay! All right. Well, thank you so much to How To Academy for inviting me to speak with Julia Cameron. Hello there, the Julia Cameron. How are you today, Julia? I'm good. It's a sunny day here on top of a mountain in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Where are you? I am in my home in Austin, Texas. And yes, in, in your latest book, uh, Seeking Wisdom, there is some conversation about, you know, divine timing, which we'll get to, um, but I hope, but I was thinking about, oh, this is such a precious time, April 5th, we've been waiting for spring. So I was going to ask you if you were at home, which it seems you are, and you know, has it come? And what is it like, the, the spring awakening? Well, the Forsythia bushes are just starting. So we're at the very beginning of spring mm -hmm. uh, and our temperatures are usually in the 50s uh, and they invite buds to blossom uh, and I have a friend who lives in Boise, Idaho, where it's 75, uh, and I'm, I'm jealous. He sent me pictures of flowers, uh, and I found myself thinking, oh, I wish it would hurry up here. Yes, I know. And it's one of those things, oh, to talk about the weather, but the weather these days really invites us to be so present. I'm in Texas. And my partner was just in Maryland and and he just got back this morning and it's it's very hot today and we fear he missed spring <laughs> just being gone. <laughs> missed, missed the Austin spring. But anyway, this is a, a beautiful day to connect and to speak with you. When I was invited to have this conversation, I kept asking, why me? <laughs> and uh -huh. yes. You're already on to me, aren't, aren't you? And through a little bit of time and contemplation, and finally through, and I'm not just saying this to butter you up, but and finally through taking the time for me to explore seeking wisdom and, and the weeks that you invite us to practice in that new book, I came to realize very clearly, why not me? So, aha. Uh -huh. Here I am, and I so thought we are. here we are. Yes, and I thought it would be quite fitting to begin with gratitude. Um, as you heard, I am a yoga teacher, but I've always fought to call myself an artist first. It's almost been like a stubborn thing. Uh, but whether I'm performing or leading a yoga class, I always like to start with gratitude. So just thank you so much for your time and thank you to How To Academy and to everyone who is joining this conversation today. 
I think anytime we gather, there's an opportunity just like in this season for something new to bud and go, oh my gosh, I didn't plant that. Where, where did that come from? So I um, just wanted to say thank you. And in the book, I think it's week three, you guide us to think about prayer as gratitude. So I wondered if we might start, if you'd be willing to share a little bit about prayers of gratitude to begin. Well, I think it's a perfect cue for me to read a poem about gratitude. Uh, I, my earliest writing uh, was poetry uh, and it remains a passion of mine. Uh, and every week I go with my friend, Nick Kapustinsky to a cafe and we are each committed to bringing a new poem. So we're writing new poetry. Uh, but this poem is a poem of gratitude. It's called, Jerusalem is Walking in This World. This is a great happiness. The air is silk. There is milk in the looks that come from strangers. I could not be happier if I were bread and you could eat me. <laughs> Joy is dangerous. It fills me with secrets. Yes, kisses in my veins. The pains I take to hide myself are sheer as glass. Surely this will pass. The wind like kisses. The music in the soup. The group of trees laughing as I say their names. It is all Hosanna. It is all prayer. Jerusalem is walking in this world. Jerusalem is walking in this world. So that poem was sort of the um, jumping off place for the book Seeking Wisdom. I wanted to write about prayer uh, and I was scared to write about prayer. I thought that's for people who are much holier than I am. <laughs> they need to be sacred. So then I thought, well, maybe if I talk about how I was cornered into prayer, that would be a good place to start. So I started the book with my sobriety story. I was told if I wanted to stay sober, I would need to pray. Uh, and I thought, I have 16 years of Catholic education, and that's the grease slide to atheism. <laughs> and and uh, then I thought, well, you must believe in something. And I thought, I do. I believe in a line from Dylan Thomas, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower, that creative spark of energy that makes a peony, an aster, a daffodil, a daisy, a lilac, that creative energy that is so specific in its guidance for how we are intended to flower. Mm -hmm. So I started praying to that creative energy. Uh, and I found myself inspired and led and guided. Uh, and I thought, oh, there's something to this after all. Mm. So that was how I was cornered into prayer. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. And I love moving from that beautiful poem really touched me. Um, to really felt, felt that in my heart. I thank you for sharing. Uh, but I think moving from gratitude to this invitation to openness 
is really beautiful, especially because we have so many people joining us for this conversation live and, and thereafter. And I think you really inspired me with the words that you choose to share about our relationship to a higher presence. Mm -hmm. And um, I was raised Catholic and then as a, as, a, as a teenager, my mom kind of became Baha'i. My dad got sober. I, I really have, you know, that I relate to that yeah. narrative. And, and I think a couple of days before I picked up Seeking Wisdom, a good friend of mine texted our girlfriend thread asking a question about our relationship to God. There were two questions and that was one of them. And I took a bit of time to answer, but ultimately I shared, you know, one of the things I stumble on in my, in my personal life, but also in my work, which is very threaded together. And actually I'm experiencing learning how to create a better work-life balance because of such, <laughs> but, but I said, one of the things that I think keeps me from embracing God's presence in the work, especially is I want to keep it accessible. You know, I want to maintain and continue to build and nurture the trust that what I'm offering, this experience to connect to yourself through the practice of yoga, through breath, through movement, this daily practice of, of showing up in order to get to know yourself better and understand yourself better. I struggle with, with, as you would say in the book, right off the bat, week one, the God concept sometimes in my work because I don't want to, to exclude anyone. So if you're open to it, I thought I might invite us to just name that, particularly here in the first part of the conversation. So as a way of just kind of honoring and respecting all who tune in or who have tuned in to listen. Um, I love you talk about the other names for God, good, orderly direction, of course, the muse, the higher power. And, and yeah, just inviting everyone to cultivate an open mind as we enter this conversation. Well, I think it's important to realize that all of us have a direct line to God. Uh, and God is sometimes a forbidding word uh, because we grew up with a, a concept of God that was maybe authoritarian, punishing, judgmental, masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then we come to, to find, I need a more intimate God. I need a God that I can do business with. I need a God that is accessible to me and friendly. Uh, and we have, uh, I think it's important to, to talk about the creativity myth that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. we, we grew up with a story that we all know. It was a beautiful day in paradise. Uh, and then Eve, uppity Eve, reached for an apple from a forbidden tree. Uh, and she handed it to Adam and said, here, sweetheart, have a bite. <laughs> Uh, and Adam, who was a hopeless codependent, obediently, obediently took a bite. Uh, and when he did, the skies parted and there was a booming voice. And the voice said, how dare you? I told you not to pluck fruit from that tree. From now on, you're going to bear your children in pain and suffering. Uh, and in fact, the two of you aren't even going to get along. <laughs> so we grew up with this idea of a creator that was jealous and competitive and territorial. Uh, and what would it have been like if we had had a different creativity myth? So it, let's let's try this one on. It was a beautiful day in paradise. And then Eve, uppity Eve, plucked an apple from the forbidden tree and handed it to Adam and said, sweetie, take a bite, it's delicious. 
and Sweetie took a bite. Uh, and then the skies parted and a booming voice said, far out. Yes. It took you long enough. I made that apple red for a reason. Mm. From now on, you're going to experience bliss. You're going to experience creativity. You're going to experience joy. You're going to experience satisfaction. You're going to experience, above all, my support. So we had then a God that was enthusiastic, encouraging, gentle, humorous. And if we had grown up with that concept of God, we wouldn't find it so scary to pray because we would feel like our prayers were welcomed. Yes, I think the biggest thing that I took away from the book and just naturally infused into my daily life was noticing how I was turning my inner dialogue more into prayer. I pray and believe in a fun and loving, supportive, divine. But I noticed that I was turning my inner chatter, which is quite good, by the way, um, Ms. Cameron, because lately I've been experiencing some physical anxiety. And so it's, it's, been, it's, been, a, it's been a new struggle. And through that practice, through recent practice, I've noticed after reading and going through the book that my inner dialogue is more prayer than just chatter. And uh -huh. this I, is good. Yes. And I am very grateful um, for, to you for that opportunity to remember, really, it's not a new thing, right? It's, I think I used to do it a lot as a child and in Seeking Wisdom, you, you share a lot of stories from uh, different friends and colleagues and their relationship with prayer, which, which to some listeners here may sound like, oh, I don't know if that's my thing. But I encourage you, if you're interested in, in just exploring how to receive support, loving kindness and support from a, a power kind of bigger than you, to, to check out the book, because I think you do a really good job of, of making it accessible. And that's something that I'm inspired and aspired to do in my work. So I feel like there's definitely some divine timing in this conversation. Well, I'd like to read a second poem. And it's cued again from something that you said. Uh, this poem is called Remembering. Mm. And it's, a, it's an invocation of what we are trying to do in this conversation. I was not there when your mother bore you. Surely you came into this world hungering and wet. We all do that. Surely you came like the rest of us from that dark sea of souls, that sighing that brings us forth and calls us back. We all share that. If this is true, and it is even for you, why are you a broken glass smashed against the floor? Why not the sea's grass on the ocean floor? Why not a smooth stone, a willow in the wind? Why do you break, not bend, and even broken, why not mend? You do know how. Walk with me to the edge of the city. Take off your shoes and feel the earth. It is softer than a woman. It is safer than your father. It is water. It is air. It is where you are returning with this yearning you can't name. Cast off your shame. It's an old coat. Remember who you are. You are a star, a mountain, that fountain in the sun. 
Your heart is the velvet cave where birds sing. Are you remembering? Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. That was lovely. 